It's now my pleasure to introduce your valedictorian, Mr. Dr. Mark Slintberg, who defended his PhD dissertation, and I quote, the artist's restaurant taste in the performative still life. He did that in September 2013. His thesis is based on deep and sometimes delicious research at temporary banquets in restaurants and in archives and museums in Dusseldorf, Kassel, Tokyo, Toronto, Montreal, and Roses, Spain, amongst other locations. Fortunate to travel to all these places and do this work. I understand he's tasted in most of these cities. He's currently teaching a, a course on the legacy of still life in the Department of Art History at Concordia University. And at the moment, he has exhibitions at the National Gallery of Canada, Ottawa, the Western Front in Vancouver, and the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia, Halifax. I would now like to ask your colleague, Dr. Mark Lindbergh, to give the valedictory address on your behalf. Dr. Lindbergh. Thank you. Chancellor Menard, Vice Chairwoman Nadeau, President Shepard, Dr. Tarok, distinguished guests and participants, fellow students, families, and friends, I'm so pleased to be here today to address you on behalf of the graduating students. Bienvenue à tous et mes félicitations chaleureuses à tous mes collègues. Two research subjects have plagued me in the last few weeks. First, how to give a valedictorian's address. And second, what color of nail polish looks the best with burgundy? As you can see, my research on the second subject is ongoing. As for the first subject, I learned that my main responsibilities are to represent and praise the graduates and to make the rest of you cry. I'm going to give that my best shot. Will these be tears of joy? We hope so. What was there to cry about? Graduating students, if you've been sequestered in your research, chained to a desk staring at a laptop screen that tells you that your file has been corrupted, there was reason to cry. When you traveled to a distant country to research a new technique or consult an archive only to learn that the facility was closed because of an obscure national holiday. Oh, there was reason to cry. And during the student protests against proposed tuition raises that took this province by storm, there was reason to cry, and this time with conviction. And when you completed your coursework, when you defended your thesis, when they called you a graduate, master, or doctor for the first time. When you received your diploma or certificate today, then there was and is reason to cry out with joy. And we shall continue to cry and also to cry out. First, we cry out for those who should be here today but are not. Those who should have been our colleagues, should have had the opportunity to study with us, but could not and so did not. The opportunity to complete academic work is a rare thing, but it shouldn't be. Secondly, we must cry out when we disagree. And I can only make such a claim today if I'm willing to talk to you now about an issue that impacts our life at our university and in our province. As you no doubt are aware, the Charter of Quebec values proposed by the current government would prohibit public sector employees such as judges, daycare workers, university staff, and teachers from wearing overtly religious symbols. For many people of faith, whether they are newly arrived in this country or if their families have been here for generations, the wearing of a religious symbol is not an option, but rather a profound expression of community and identity. My education at Concordia has taught me to respect the traditions and religious beliefs of the people who surround me, and I believe that we must cry out against this law that threatens environments like our own Concordia University, a place of such great diversity. <laughs> a 
a place of great diversity that we are so proud of and so thankful for. And finally, on that subject, we cry out thank you. We cry out thank you to our beloveds, to our families, our friends, our professors, our staff members, and our university, all of whom helped carry us here today. They wouldn't let us give up and they wouldn't let us quit. No, no, these people said to us, no, no, we have stuck through you, through the desperation, the righteousness, the rants, and the glory of it all, and you are not giving up now. And so we cry out to them, thank you. <laughs> Today we celebrate, but I believe that we also leave this room with privileges matched by weighty responsibilities. Today you should be proud, graduates. Well done. Let's cry out and celebrate. Congratulations. In future, may we live up to the responsibilities of these great achievements. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark, for uh, a very timely and, and striking valedictory address. The subject of crying is something that we've all experienced in your academic life, as he's talked about your ups and downs, at the, both the support that you have from your family, who've told you you're condemned to succeed, you can't give up, no matter how difficult the travel or the journey might be. But crying out against what is coming out of Quebec City these days is also the right thing to do. And given our values, our roots, our DNA as an institution here at, Victoria, at Concordia, of inclusiveness, of, uh, of diversity, uh, of respect for one another, um, no way can we do anything but cry out and work as best we can to make sure that what we're being proposed or suggested never comes to happen and never changes this university. And I'm confident that together we're going to be able to overcome this, this passage. So thank you very much, Mark, for reminding us of all the good reasons we should cry for joy and also cry out against things that don't make any sense. Thanks a lot, Mark, on behalf of everybody.